Uh, good evening. We've uh, got quite a few already that are all ready and keen to uh, get started. So we'll uh, we'll just give it a few more minutes, uh, just a couple to seven o'clock, and uh, just to let the next uh, few people uh, join in. Um, we will do the volume test. You just check that everything's all right. If you just like to uh, raise your hand to start off with, if you know on the if you've been on one of our webinars before. Um, it's just on the, the right hand side. I'll explain more about how you ask questions if you're new as well. Um, but if you can hear me all right, uh, if you just wouldn't mind uh, just raising your hand. Excellent. Thank you, Alan. First one I can uh, see on my list. That's, uh, brilliant. Yes. and everybody, Brilliant. So everyone can hear me fine. So the audio is working, which is always a good start. Um, how are we on another minute or so? Uh, but we've got plenty, uh, plenty lined up this evening for you. Well, that's no, really good, uh, good attendance so far. So many thanks for uh, for starting. Um, I will uh, for joining us on time. I will uh, just start with a, a quick introduction about myself, um, and then we will uh, we'll get started. And obviously, people can. Uh, join us. We just got a bit of explain about what the session is to to uh, start off with. So, um, my name is Peter Brook, um, England Development Officer uh, for British Orienteering, um, and you know, this is all uh, part of a, a new initiative that we're starting with uh, webinars. Well, we're into our third one now for this year. Um, so, purpose again is just to bring some bring some training, new ideas, give different perspectives on what's going on uh, in different areas across the country um, and hopefully that will aim to give you some uh, some more support, some more ideas um, that you can take within your clubs um, and really help to, uh, to, to grow your club. Um, I'll move on to just explaining how you can ask questions. Um, it's a really easy process. So um, on the right hand side of your screen, or uh, it is for hopefully the majority, um, there'll be a little um, taskbar. Um, if you just click on uh, the arrow, which is just about to be uh, pointed out to you, um, <laughs> um, that will tell you, uh, that will open up your control panel. In that control panel, um, you'll then see um, another um, It'll be another box to ask questions. Uh, it's just been pointed out now for you. Um, and if you have a look today, you can type in questions. I will be um, uh, I will be able to monitor them as we go through, and uh, we'll ask them as they come through. Um, first question in already from Stuart. Hi, Stuart. Uh, thanks for asking. Uh, thanks for letting us know. Um, so good to see you. We're going to um, we'll then crack on. So I will now pass you over to uh, to Sal and uh, we'll carry on with the rest of the introduction. Hi, thanks for joining us. Um, I'm Sal Chaffee from Derwent Valley Orienteers and I'm the club's informal events coordinator and I'm also working towards my level two coaching award. Okay. I'm going to ask some questions about our audience at yes. this point. So we shall, uh, I'm oh, going to do, yeah, I'm going to do the first of our, uh, our polls. Um, so we're going to ask, uh, get you involved. Uh, let me just get this uh, poll ready for you. Um, so, really straightforward question to start off with. What would you say best describes you as a coach? Um, so, I'll give you about a, a minute or so. If you just click on all that apply, uh, so you can click multiple uh, multiple answers there. Um, it'd be really good to get a good idea about um, obviously what's, uh, what level um, and what type of coach. Uh, you are at the moment, so getting some uh, some good feedback through there. We've got uh, 66 percent. Yeah, I can track how many people are mm -hmm. uh, answering their questions mm -hmm. as we go through. Uh, I'll give it a little bit longer. We're nearly at everybody there, which is great. Um, and then I will uh, I will pause it. But some really interesting um, answers there as well. So I think we're getting a a broad um, perspective to uh, to talk about tonight, which will be really good uh, and. What will be really good is to get your feedback tonight as we go through. So if there's no silly questions, so if you do have a question on um, something you're not sure about and um, that you've heard or you want a bit more depth, do ask it. Um, if you're thinking about it, there's bound to be lots of other people um, asking it uh, or thinking it the same. 
So I will close that and let me share this for you. This gives you an idea. So this is what people have said tonight. Um, real good mix there um, of people coming in. So describes you as a coach. Um, so again, so nearly fifty percent. Yeah, nearly fifty percent um, new to coaching. Really good to see getting involved, uh, picking up some. Uh, I'm sure you're going to pick up plenty of useful tips tonight. Um, some other answers there, so I think we've got a really good, um, really good spread mm, of people. Good. Okay, I will uh, close that one down, and I will uh, pass you back to Sal to uh, to carry on. Okay, um, thanks. So, as a club, we've been looking at ways um, to make our events more attractive to new families and adults, and we've been quite successful at this because over the last two years, um, our various park series have had. Um, about half of the, the people who've attended have been newcomers or at least non-BOF members, non-BOF members yet. Um, so that's been really good. Um, so tonight we're going to look at um, the event and series structures that we've found um, to be effective. And then we're going to cover some coaching points more most relevant for, for beginners. And then we'll finish up by um, looking at ways you can encourage new orienteers to become club members. Um, so, so this is an example of one of our series. Um, we found that offering these BSOA um, Explorer badges is a free of charge is a good incentive. Um, I'll say a bit more about this later. Um, so obviously these are targeted towards um, children, but we do have a steady trickle of adult beginners as well at our events. I've lost my cursor. <laughs> oh, that there is. Okay. Um, so I'd like to share with you what um, we found has worked well um, in our Derby Park series. Um, so our club covers a big area and we like the idea of um, having events clustered into, say, a five mile radius um, because new people don't really want to drive for an hour to try a new activity that they're not sure about. Um, so um, timing, uh, SYO found that this Saturday slot works well and, and we've um, found it to be really good as well. But um, in terms of scheduling the, the events in the series, we tend to do one, roughly one a fortnight for about two or three months. And that gives them plenty of time to consolidate their new skills. And then we find that after they've done a series, they, they will be willing to travel to the nor northern part of the county. So that's good. Um, promotion. Uh, like Jules from Northern Ireland, um, we heard from a fortnight ago on the webinar, we use online and traditional means. Um, we use Facebook boost boosted posts that we found to be um, cost effective and work well. Um, we use printed flyers too, um, that we distribute to venues near the event location, such as um, leisure centers, libraries, etc. I also take them round to primary schools, um, although I found recently that um, if you phone the schools in advance to get permission and get, say, the class sizes for the, the upper juniors, which is year five, six, um, you can then count them into batches per class, so each pupil gets one in the book bag, and Derby City Education Service will deliver all these free of charge, so that, that's great for schools in the city. Um, visibility, we, we want the event to be um, quite prominent, so we have the start and finish near a cafe or near the car park. We have all our feather banners up and a come and try it banner. Um, so what we offer in courses, um, we, we went for linear courses because that means that people actually have to navigate rather than just headless chickening around the controls. Um, we charge, this year we charge three pounds for juniors and five pounds for adults. But we do this thing where we offer a second course for just 50p and that's really popular with families. Um, you find um, second time round they might um, team up in different combinations and maybe have a bit of a race. So that's really good. Um, do, do any of you offer um, the chance to do a second course at a discount? 
quick show of hands. Let's see, yes. Raise your hand if you're uh, on there, or you can ask a question. We do have a question in, so I'll give you a chance to, um, I'll just put my uh, camera back on. So I'll give you a second while um, you raise your hand. We do have a question from, uh, from Hillary. How do you decide how many maps you're going to print? Oh, <laughs> good question. We're always... We try and be quite generous. Um, our, our mapping officer is is kind of quite experienced, mm. and he'll he'll contact me or he'll contact the organizer and have a bit of a chat about it on email. Um, yeah. So um, so I was saying about offering a second course for fifty p, and as well as doing that at local events, we do it at regional events as well. Um, so it's always a bit of a tough call recommending a course at a regional event that will have the right amount of challenge. Um, so. Just going to quickly, uh, just a question in from Jen as well. Um, when you have a family, uh, how much do you look to charge? Ah, how do you approach that? We charge five pounds per family um, if they're going round with one map. Mm. We it's a bit of an area of confusion yes. um but we 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 charge per map really rather than per person and people are generally pleasantly surprised um do you charge per family jen or shall say yes <laughs> you want to quickly write another one how do you um what sort of things do you do in your club yes we do yeah okay yeah i mean i think we possibly could be undercharging but interesting anyway. yes. um so so um we have an incentive scheme for children as i've mentioned does anyone else have a scheme they offer to newcomers um either adults or children we're going to launch this as a poll okay. so uh, you've got uh, another minute or so uh, just to get some questions in um on do you think about your club do you have an incentive scheme for a number of courses or controls completed by uh, individuals so we'll give you uh, a little bit longer to um answer through there so it's uh we've certainly got one answer that's leading the way at the moment uh we'll a little bit longer to uh to carry uh, on through oh, it's uh yeah so yeah. we were at, uh, give you another few seconds and we've got a few more questions that have come through as well so um just while that's uh, that poll's finishing off let's um uh, so, excuse me if I'm uh, pronouncing the name wrong. So, yeah, is it Grigor? Uh, we charge for family, but uh, they receive two maps for the training or, oh, or the event that they do. Good idea, yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, uh, Rob also made a comment about great idea to uh, to charge by the map. Um, and then Hillary's added just on, on on this subject as well that uh, they only charge for juniors, uh, so three pound for junior juniors. Uh, and if there's uh, there are two, they charge five pound for the family and let them have a map per child. So yeah, different uh, approaches mm, okay. which we look through there. Yeah. So I will now uh, I'll just close that poll. So interesting question, incentive schemes. Um, I'll share that now. That is the result um, again from those mm. that uh, have done. So that's. Uh, it's interesting to have a look through. So, 89% of them don't have um, an incentive scheme. So, I'm going to tell you about <laughs> the one we use in DPO. So, I will uh, I'll pass you back to Sam. I've lost. I'll turn over. Oh, no. I have turned over. Okay. So, um, we use the, the BSOA badges. Um, they're 50p each. Um, and the certificates are the same price from the the, web, the shop on the website, but the club foots the bill for the badges. And as you can see, they've been popular. We, we 85 children have received one each year. Um, does anyone else out, out there use this scheme? Any of the 12%? Uh, I will do. keep an eye on it. Hands. Uh, nothing at the moment. Okay, well, um, so we found them popular with newcomers and with existing club juniors. You, you're never too old to get a badge. Um, and we found kind of two hidden advantages as well with them. Um, so to administer the scheme, you need to collect the parents' um, email address um, and 
with consent you can add that address to to your mailing list for for events for novices and the other advantage is um, we display the badge spreadsheet um, on our website so it gets um, people in the habit of checking the website and looking at our fixtures list so um, our badge scheme administrator um, uploads the, his spreadsheet after each um, event and um, you know everyone looks how they're doing um, importantly as well as local events we also um, include regional events in the badge scheme um, maybe just the spring and autumn ones so we'd um, we'd nominate a closing event in October and November and then we restart the scheme the following year in about March because some of our um, sort of winter peak district events are, aren't great for young families um, so here here are some youngsters from our Matlock Club Night uh, with their badges and certificates. Um, there's a few issues that I'll, I'll quickly mention about, about these. Um, once they've got the 100 badge, some people think, oh, they've done orienteering and they don't really kind of see, you know, that they could improve. So, um, you know, then's the time to mention, well, you know, you could try, try going around quicker, not making mistakes if you can. Um, but you know, it's it's not for everyone. Um, the second thing is that parents may be navigating for the children, but after one or two events, um, mum or dad will, will run a separate course or maybe shadow. You know, they see um, orienteering children going around on on their own, and they kind of get what it's about. Um, and occasionally, you do get some sort of alpha parents wanting um, Johnny to get his 50 badge when he's only found 45 controls so um, our badge administrator has to use a bit of diplomacy and a bit of negotiation um, so later on we'll look at ways that you can nudge your beginners from just control collecting um, but before that let's look at things um, that need to be in place to have a really good first event. I'm just going to um, jump in because we've got a yeah. couple of questions that uh, are popped through as well. Solway, they use the SOA uh, badge scheme okay. as well. Good to hear. Ah, yeah. um, uh, and a question uh, on Jen, well, there's a couple of questions Jen's just asked. Men, just going back to one of the earlier points with the charging of maps, um, <coughs> that um, their approach, and I think it's a very good point, um, is that advertising per adult and per child could potentially put some people off. Um, mm, true, yeah. As a family of four, I think it's going to be sixteen pounds for the family. Yeah, and, um, yeah. Very true. So yeah. um, it's on the publicity they put um, so much per map. Um, other options, I suppose okay. you could put so much. Um, you could advertise that there's a family price and mm, as well. Yeah. Um, and then um, Jen also the other question Jen asked was so uh, does the parent um, do all the admin for the uh, for the badge scheme? Is that how it is that how it operates? Um, no, um, Rex looks after the scheme in our club. So as I say, he's the he kind of keeps a spreadsheet with how many controls they've all mm -hmm. got at each event. Um, so yeah, so it's a, a couple of hours after each event. <laughs> Just a bit. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, the other question from uh, Alan: Do you make use of the British Orienteering uh, Incentive Scheme as well? I'm going to come to that later. That's the scheme for members, I, yeah. I guess. Yeah, yeah, that's to, towards the end, yes. Uh, okay. All right, we'll carry on. Okay. Um, so, yes. oh, sorry, I, I'd already turned over. Um, so, yes, the, the things um, from a club perspective that need to be in place. So, um, obviously, ask the planner to put the start and finish somewhat somewhere prominent. Um, at local events a lot of our planners are also new to the planning process so our, our mapping officer um, is very helpful with with novice planners he gives them um, a sort of checklist for purple pen and he acts um, he takes on some of the role of controller because we, we don't have controllers at these low key events um, so you've got your focal point. We we like the maze because it's somewhere where parents with with younger children can wait. Um, our badge scheme operates from age five upwards, so it's nice that there's something for the smaller ones. And um, you can see it's brilliant for for practice for setting the map. Um, so 
registration um, in terms of flow it needs to be quite efficient but after registration when they've got their map and their divot we have um, four or five meters and greeters on hand um, who can really take time explaining things um, so we have six coaches in the club plus Stuart and myself who are training um, uh, but last year we ran at one of our open meetings we ran Hilary Palmer's car to start workshop exactly. and we found that um, you know we've in now increased our pool of helpers uh, for newcomers plus there's the registration team and the inquiries team and you know we wear high vis or we wear club jackets. Um, wrapping up we, we always put course closure time on the map and if somebody turns up in the second half of that start window we'll explain oh we will be taking the controls in from four o'clock um the issue with um if they want to do more than one course wherever we publicize that as an option we'll say please come early if you want to do this um having said that not everyone reads everything and uh, there has been times when we've um, been chomping at the bit in a park in derby at half past four on a saturday uh, waiting for people to get in um so moving on well, to coaching. I'm obviously. just going to jump in actually as well. Um, yeah. just, again, there's some good questions coming through. Hiller's really pleased that he was in the meet and greet. Okay, really <laughs> good. To yeah. Hear that one as well. Um, uh, Rogers asked, how are you using um, BSOA logbook um, in these ah. can we get parents? Ah, that would be a good idea actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Good. I wasn't aware <laughs> of that. Thank you. All different ones. <laughs> good. Good, uh, good input there, Roger. Uh, and Jen, how do you avoid all the newcomers uh, turning up at the same time? So they found that uh, if they all turn up at 10.30 and end up with a big queue at, at registration. Yeah, um, we, we, we do. Yeah, we get a lot. Um, they tend to come at about quarter to one. And if that happens, we'll, we'll well, now we always kind of put a table um, in the middle of the queue with the forms so they can be filling in the forms before they get to the front or we'll, we'll have sort of two people taking money um yeah we do we do get queues um, mm -hmm. yes manpower Getting yeah the people out yeah. of the yeah. and um, no it's okay yeah. so so now ah yeah so coaching a new family um what would be the three main things you would want to do with a, a new family at a local event? Uh, they've never used a dibber before, so let's let's have your thoughts on this, and then I'll share mine. Yes, have a think through. Mm -hmm. Send us some uh, send us some comments. Uh, what do you think will be the uh, three things we want to do this one as a as a poll? But uh, have a think about uh, what the main three things. Um, you'd want your family at the first event to know. So they've never used a dibber before as well. So we'll give it a, a minute to so get some, uh, let's see what answers uh, and points that you uh, bring up. Uh, it's obviously really important. Uh, but we've got a few coming through now. Uh, let's say, uh, Martin, yeah, you must download. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yes. Uh, show them how do you get. Uh, the map the right way around, take them to yes. the nearby control, yeah. try out the dinner. Yeah, great, yes, yeah. yes absolutely. Um, uh, hello there, yeah. so how to dip at the control, don't yeah. presume anything. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, how many people have come back on a new one and missed the control because yeah. they've not very, 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 very to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah, how to, how to do it, um, must come back and return the dipper. Yeah, yeah. Um, but again, if people don't know these simple things, then what we can't uh, can't be excused for uh, not understanding colors on the map the scale yes. uh, oh, yeah. lots coming mm -hmm. through demonstrate use uh, visit the controls um, setting the map it's a race as well mm -hmm. it's going to be a race um, if it's a family as well um i was looking through loads i'm trying to keep up here so i'm looking at me yeah, my screen coming me. through <laughs> um explain the map scale compared to an os map might be different yes, um, yeah. again use the dipper again it's very popular um, what to find at each control point, um, maybe have a maze at the start uh, to get used to what will happen, um, basic symbols on the map, yeah, objectives, yeah. Uh, objects, sorry, um, and the control points, don't spend too long, this is coming, really good mm. input coming through, mm. um, 
and don't spend too long talking about the map symbols yet. Uh, yeah, have an example of the control flag uh, things early yeah, on um, through and yeah, let them know what time the course is going to control. You don't mm. want them wandering off to a cafe or something halfway around. We've there. had that, you know, <laughs> <laughs> half an hour on the playground. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. Yeah. So uh, that was really good. Um, hopefully I got through lots of uh, lots of the points there, but there's loads. Um, just, okay, uh, I'll just quickly slide mine in. Yes. yes, orienting the map. Um, yeah. And the thing I concentrate on the legend is the colours for the vegetation because I don't I don't find them very intuitive. They're not at all like um, ordnance survey map colours, are they? I mean, why why is forest white? But anyway. I'm, uh, Start and finish, and that you, you need to dip there as well. Um, controls in order. I, I say it's it's like a dot to dot puzzle, and you've got to get them all. And if there's anywhere where you need to dip twice, say number four is the same as number eleven, um, I'll explain that fairly carefully as well. Course closure time. Have fun. Yeah. I think there was just one more. Just gonna... Just going to jump in on that. It's just come through, and I think certainly with new people, um, it's a really good point. Um, so Graham has said, uh, um, agrees with the point. So say very little. Go to control, set the map, no more. So it's about it is about keeping it simple as well, and not mm. trying to yeah overload them at the yeah, same time. Yeah, there's so much you could say mm. to them. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. And uh, yellow equals sunshine. The clearing in the forest. The spot nice. started in Sweden. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, very good. Very good. Yeah. yeah, so I'll okay. start jumping in. Um, so, yeah, as we've discovered, there's so much information to get over, but um, you don't want to kind of bombard them with, with you talking. So here's um, some ways, hopefully, to make it, the process more interactive. Um, so once you've given them a quick um, explanation, a good way to check their understanding is to ask questions, as, as one person mentioned. Um, what number will you find at your fifth control? Uh, what feature will your sixth control be on? Um, ask them to demonstrate um, setting a map and using the dipper, yeah. Um, tell stories um yeah it, it, we like stories in dvo um we often tell them about our holiday in denmark where there was orienteers from 45 different countries and um you know that's why we have the standard symbols that everyone understands and that's why there's the funny um hieroglyphics on the control descriptions you know they, they can be understood all over the world um a lot of our coaches are or were teachers and um you know, it helps if you kind of channel your sunny big personality when you're explaining things and uh, don't be don't be shy to check that they understand. Um, occasionally we, we get a child in tears um, if say mum and dad are still out on the course and they've um, downloaded, perhaps found that they've missed a control. So, um, you know, it's important to take that in hand and then chat to them and couple of you could walk to the finish with them and, and wait for the parent. Um, we're all used to sending our children out into the forest from an early age, but you know, a lot of children these days just don't get that um, independence. Um, so yeah, depending on their age, um, if, if it's a very young child, you know, I, I just give them the dibber and explain the ins and outs of the navigation to the, the parent. Um, if they're a bit older, you know, they, they're obviously going to get more involved. Um, and if they're adults or teenagers, I often say that orienting the map is like using a sat nav in the way that it reorients. After every change of direction, you, you've got to do the same on the orienteering course. And I think that's a, a good analogy because, um, you know, you've always, you've always kind of got the direction of travel in front of you. Um, So we've got to be careful um, not to use jargon. Um, us older orienteers need to avoid using anachronisms, which can be misunderstood. Uh, so a bit of a quiz now. Um, here's a medium standard course. Um, it theoretically yellow. Some legs are, some aren't. Um, what techniques would a beginner need to get around this course? Some suggestions, and I'll share my list. Uh, 
Uh, let's see what questions <coughs> come through. Graham just added one on to the, uh, the previous techniques uh, in conveying information. So, um, promoting peer to peer learning. Oh, yes. Asking Ooh, those to yeah. get it to try and help teach the others as well. So, right. and that can be of, of any age, isn't it? If you've got a really good youngster. Yeah. Um, that's new, and, but we've yeah. suddenly got it, and somebody's struggling. And yeah. so they can, yeah. they can help there as well. So, um, just give it a, a second, just to get your your answers <laughs> in. So, what techniques um, would a beginner need uh, to get around this course? Do you think? Let's have a have a look through. Uh, first one in there for sure. Aiming off. Aiming yes. Off, um, yeah. Certainly, this leg down here. I think uh, if they bought their compass, they could aim off on the yeah. bottom. Um, understanding colours. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. The yellow, uh, sort of yellow. Uh, use the handrails. Keep yes. the map the right way around. Yes. Thumb where you are. Explaining yes. what thumb might be. Yeah, you see, there's a, a leg here where there's a lot of path junctions. They've got so to, three to um, so it's four to five. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yes, know what the colours represent. Fold the map. Yeah. Yep. Just uh, it, some, some straightforward uh, ones. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. Let's see what I've got. I think I've got uh, most of those. Um, yeah, sometimes they bring a compass with them and, you know, that, that can help. Um, but Generally, the, the local events in parks, they can you know, orient that to ground. Uh, yeah, so. So, moving on to after the event now, um, as well as collecting all the email addresses, um, something else you have to think about is how you display the results. And having said that we prefer linear courses, um, you know, what do you do when a beginner misses a control? Um, I mean, we say miss punched rather than disqualified, um, which is less discouraging, um, but there is um, a more inclusive way that you can display your results. Um, has anyone heard of Spanish score? Okay, Joe, hands, uh, our poll. Quick, uh, quick question on this one. So uh, yes, if, uh, have you heard of Spanish score? And then that will uh, that will help obviously as we move on to the next bit. Good response, okay. good response so far. Certainly leaning one way rather than the other. Uh, I'll give you another second or two just for the uh, the last few people just to uh, to give us their uh, their input. Right, I think don't think that's going to change too much. Okay. <laughs> so we can see the live uh, the live voting as you come through. It's like being on TV. Mm -hmm. uh, right, so let's um, I will close that down and okay. let's share. That's the result. So I'll give you an idea okay. of the result, and we'll um, we'll move on to Spanish score. Okay. And can explain more about it. So, um, oops. Right. Um, so Spanish score. Um, it's not really a well, I'm talking about Spanish score as a format for displaying results. So um, what happens is um, it's, it's a linear course and you display everyone that gets all the controls in order. You list them in the results in time order. And then if they get all the controls except for one, you list that group of people in time, time order and then etc you can see what i mean you can see the person at the bottom of the screen has got nine out of the 13 controls so they're still listed as having completed the course but you know they can see that there's room for improvement um, so they're all these are all local events so they don't count for rankings um, but of course if they go on to do regional events you do need to communicate that um, those events don't work like that. Um, I wouldn't actually use the term Spanish score in any of the publicity because it's it's unnecessary jargon really for beginners and then for existing orienteers it's um, it's a bit misleading because it, as I say it isn't score because the controls are in linear sequence. Um, so basically it's a, a great format for results display for local events. Um, 
I do think that there's um, a place for conventional score with beginners, but I think maybe more adults than, than children. Um, I, I think children really like the kind of structure of doing a linear event. Um, and they are practicing a new skill. And I don't, I think the added dimension of where to go first um, really perhaps just detracts from that. But um, as I say, I think um, adult beginners, some adult beginners enjoy score. Um, so. so here's a question. Um, they know the basics. Why offer coaching after the first event? Any ideas? I'll pop back in. Any uh, questions? Uh, sorry, questions? Any answers to this one? So strongly resist. Uh, sorry, I've just read one from earlier on. Um, actually, sorry on there. I strongly resist compass work um, until much later uh, mm. with newcomers. Yeah, I, I think at parks events there's enough. Mm. There's a path network and enough features to orient uh, without the compass. Yeah, um, a couple of personal connection uh, with the newcomer. Um, so onto the uh, the coaching beyond the first event. So yeah, the personal connection, make them feel part of the club. Yes, them, yeah, you know, so that, yeah. That uh, connection there and keeping them interested, and yeah. um, which will keep them coming along mm. and, and talking about what they've done right. Nothing ever is a. Uh, it's not a negative if they've, they've gone wrong. You don't want to be using mm. that type of language mm. at all. It's just you know how can they, mm. they learn oh, for next yeah. time. Um, and also just a, a point about defining what coaching is as well um, I'm, I'm presuming I'm, I'm getting this right sorry Stuart just making sure I understand the, uh, the question there so yeah you need to define um, for what coaching is um, to people as well is it support is it um, training advice it, oh, mm. it, it can encompass quite I've a few things I've got that in a bit, yeah. yeah so yeah. I'll address that one uh, okay. coming through um, yeah well, Carry on, okay. if there's any more that, that pop up so, to there. Or, yeah, uh, you just said it. Um, if people do better, they'll be more satisfied, more likely to return, more likely to join. Um, if, if you were learning another sport like archery, you'd want to feel that you were making some progress, um, getting more accurate, hitting the target than hitting the bullseye. Um, the, the recent South London skills videos that uh, came out were made partly in response to the high dropout rate of juniors between orange and light green and I think you know targeted coaching can help people with the various transitions that there are in orienteering um, give them the skills. Just want to just clarify something Roger just um, just asked and um, is this at the event so this coaching beyond the first event is this at the event um, straight away so feedback or is this additional is this, this is coaching? really it's sort of coaching at the event because um, if if they do two courses at the event you know there's a, a couple of opportunities there um, you know they're, they're people that haven't joined the club yet um, so we're not doing dedicated um, coaching sessions for them although we, we do do a club night at some times of the year but I, I'm talking about at events Okay. Yeah, so one of the best opportunities to give tips on how to improve is, is at the end end of an event. So here's Rex in the DVO top chatting to a beginner about how she got on. Um, does anyone have any ideas of uh, questions he might be asking? Let's come back in. Let's uh, see what comes through. So what sort of example of uh, <coughs> questions in the debrief uh, after completing a course, what sort of questions do you think um, would be good to ask? That's the first one through. Um, yeah, which route did you take from, from two mm. to three? So yeah, yeah. Pick, uh, pick out that uh, maybe the, the tricky uh, the tricky leg uh, and have yeah. a look. Yeah. Um, uh, what was your attack point for that control? So yeah, that, that could be some coaching in itself as well. In, in actually explaining what yes. the attack point yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, see there. Great one, Alan. Did you have fun? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's probably the first one to yeah. ask, isn't yeah. it? I think. Um, how do you find controls? So, so Christine, um, uh, did you enjoy finding the controls? Will you do it again next time? Um, was the one that was, did you find a particular control difficult to find? Um, 
And shall I show you how to use the compass in the right direction? Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, if it's, yeah. if it's one uh, through there, some uh, some good uh, some yeah. good points. I'll, I'll keep I'll keep on screen for the moment. I'm yeah. sure there's a few more that are just popping in. Okay, I'll I'll share mine. Uh, yeah, the mistakes question is is an obvious one. Um, and it's, it's important to show up empathy here if they've missed a control and hopefully there's an opportunity for them to have another go at a course so they go home feeling a bit more positive. Um, problem solving and resilience are, are key qualities for orienteers but it can take a while for them to become second nature. Um, another thing I might ask is how, how would you avoid that happening again and somebody mentioned the opportunity yeah. to describe what an attack point is. Um, I, I think aiming off is quite a useful thing to um, explain to beginners. So I might say, oh, if there's a control on um, a long feature like a river, um, all the good orienteers might just aim deliberately to one side so that when they get to the river, they know which way to turn and that, that can save you a lot of time. Um, and oh, then okay. Jen's saying, how many controls did you find? Then congratulate them for finding any. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Good. Um, yes. What do you think worked well? What do you think didn't? Um, mm -hmm. Some more on there. Uh, how do you think you did? Ask what they, uh, why they said that. Uh, and give you the answer. Um, do you want your logbook signing? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would talk about mistakes. Yeah, it makes them feel like they've got it wrong. I tell them that all the uh -huh. orienteers, all orienteers, yes, yeah. very important. Um, and could you think of a better way of doing that leg? Could it be a case of um, why did you, you think that? And then how have you thought that maybe you could do this this room mm. as well? Um, if there is a better one, but yeah, would you like to come again next time? Um, yeah, yeah, good ones. Yeah, so um, this is where I'm going to come in with my my definition of coaching. Um, so I got um, that coaching is helping somebody to unlock their personal potential and um, it's it's kind of more about them helping them to recognize a learning opportunity um, than simply giving information although that is part of it um, and the next slide has some ideas um, so I we, we thought that um, there's no reason why at local events you shouldn't have even the long course map available before the start. Um, so beginners might like some tips like you might want to look for this feature before you leave the path. Um, experienced orienteers might decide they want to practice a certain skill like control flow or pace counting. Um, yes. Good idea. I like that. I like the point, Hilary. Yes. Um, good idea to see the map in advance. It's not the world champs. Yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so once they're, they're going to regional events, you can um, encourage reflection with um, the tools online, um, such as Root Gadget, um, Wind Splits. So that emphasizes the racing element and the route choice element. And I think that's a really good way of getting. Um, keen people drawn in. Um, and another idea is ask um, what coaching needs they have. Um, recently um, the DVO coaches got um, new members and older members who are interested in improving, in improving. We got them together in a pub one evening and we gave them um, some event analysis sheets um, that we asked them to fill in and that identifies some of their weaknesses um, and then we ask them to tell us three um, skills that they would like coaching on and we'll, we'll put those sessions on in June. Um, so next we're going to encourage way, look at ways you might encourage people who have done perhaps four or five events to join your club. Um, does anyone have any suggestions of, of ways um, to nudge them into joining? See what uh, see what comes through. Um, other ideas for uh, promoted learning was Graham's just coming with emphasise dialogue, emphasis dialogue. So reflection that is uh, shared with others, so everyone gets multiple ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Sharing splits is a good thing actually. Um, 
Certainly. And uh, so the uh, so just going back onto the obviously promoting. Um, tell them uh, they get a discount for entry. Uh, is one of yes. Them. Yeah. Um, how are they allowed to participate in the fourth event? Insurance rule on that one. Yes. <laughs> that, yeah. <laughs> um, we have just decided to give all new uh, club members um, a club. Becky, excuse my ignorance on that one. Um, keep sending them emails, encouraging them to join <laughs> um, with online link. Obviously, yeah, make yeah. sure that they've um, given you permission to do that yeah. um, as well. Must do that caveat at the same time, but certainly, yeah, yeah, get them in touch. Um, ask them as well. Um, what is the best way to get in touch with them? As well, they might uh, might be email and um, get them to get involved in your social media promotion mm. um, through your Facebook group and yeah. your website as well. Isn't it? Yeah. there? Um, I'll leave it on for a moment and just uh, if you okay. go on and I'll, I'll jump in if there's any more that come through. So um, here I've got an example of our benefits of joining Postcard. Um, so. This is from the BOF print portal. Um, I think they're £59 for 250 And I really like the print portal. Um, it's great as a design tool if um, you want to, a free design tool, if you want to just use the image electronically or if you just want to print half a dozen out at home. Um, and it's also a good photo library. Um, you can use images of orienteers of various ages on your own publicity. Um, and British Orienteering are completely happy for us to use it this way. Um, so another thing that we do is to have copies of the current um, membership form um, available to, at events. And we, we handwrite the association and club fee on. So they've got a physical reminder when they go home. And then if they do go online and join, they know what they're going to expect to pay. Um, somebody mentioned the insurance. We, we have that on the small print of our event info as a, a gentle nudge. And when um, British Orienteering do the 14 months for the price of 12 offer in early November, we put that on our Facebook page with a link to the joining page. Um, but still, we have um, regular people at local and even regional events that, that don't join. Um, I guess you know, it's always going to be a bit of a, a problem, isn't it? Um, a couple of questions yeah. just come in, um, just with regard to the um, print portal as well and um, mm -hmm. it's something we're looking at at the moment so i can't give you um firm answers on that i'm afraid at the moment about using specific images rather than the set images that are there so the local club oh, images right, yeah. um but yes um some of them saying out, out of date and things it is something we're actively looking at at the moment so um just uh, i don't know much more at the moment to be able to, to pass on through there but mm -hmm. it's something that so we are we are actively looking at uh, at the moment uh, yes, I said that. So when they they do join, when you've got families and individuals that um, join, they can be encouraged to look at their achievements on on the BOF website. Um, and there's these two printable certificates um, that they can uh, get involved with. So the first one is the navigation challenge, which kind of guides them through the colour coded scheme with a star for each technical difficulty. Um, the second one emphasises speed more. So um, they have to do three courses of the same technical difficulty um, within a certain time. So I think to get gold, they've got to do sub 12.5 minute Ks um, and then the bronze and silver in that maybe 20 minute Ks. Um, some clubs offer the colour-coded cloth badges, the little stripes, um, which are really good. Um, so it's useful if your results software generates the cut-off time for, say, um, orange standard. Um, for members, these schemes are found when logged in under My Account, My Achievements, Incentive Schemes, and for non-members, um, they're described under the Go Orienteering tab. And we, we have a, a display of this at our local events and also we have a, an explanation of it on, on our club website um, with, with lots of links. 
sale. So I think it's it's important to add on these ones as well, especially when people are new in to think if they can start achieving things quickly, yeah. um, mm. it gives them an extra sense of satisfaction. Yes. Yeah. Um, you, you see all sorts about, um, just because I happened to see it today about Slimming World and everybody showing oh, yeah. the certificates yeah. about how yeah. well they were doing mm -hmm. through there. Um, and it's the same principle. Yeah. Um, I think whatever whatever age uh, you are as mm. well, it's not just there for, mm. for, uh, for children, it's certainly adults that are trying something new, um, why not? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so, okay, um, so to wrap up, um, we, we want to make sure everyone has, who comes along to an event has a really good first time. Um, so. I think the important things are welcoming people on registration, plenty of meters and greeters um, in high vis or club jackets, and that opportunity for them to go around another course um, and well planned courses that build skills progressively. Um, maybe with a visual of the color coded system, um, that's certainly important to have available at, at regional events. Um, Keep your explanations uh, clear and try and make them interactive, get people involved. Um, and then when, when they've had their run, take an interest, give positive feedback and have information to give out about the next club events. Um, so it's all simple stuff, but it needs a club wide approach. And I'd like to thank all the coaches, event officials and help teams um, in DVO that have made our, our events so popular with beginners. And thank you all for, for watching and contributing. Yeah, I think we'll just uh, we've got some. If you do have any uh, any questions, I think there's a couple more that just come through. I'll just touch on these in a minute. Um, certificates, yeah, only work if clubs load the results. And important, make sure they do go in. Um, and then uh, for people as well, once they've finished, uh, encourage them to uh, to share what they're doing on on yes. Facebook and and the achievement as well. Um, for people that like-minded people as well and no doubt their friends might yeah. want to come down and the mm -hmm. conversation with some families about how they they've been to one of them um they're actually encouraging their friends to come along yeah. as well so yeah certainly uh, that um yeah and it's a question uh so a question from from graham and uh, new significant significant emphasis on urban parks so folk can um walk to an event activity especially good if there's um a permanent orienteering course that they can use yes. Yeah, no, all, all really useful. Um, we have a, a non-member email circulation list, um, which is jargon-free emails just about local events. Uh, again, yeah, how a really different and, and good approach to uh, for, for newcomers as well. I think it's um, some very important there. So, I'll give you just a, a few more minutes, just in case there's any more uh, questions that uh, that you've got that you want to come through. Um, I just personally like to obviously thank Sal for all the effort you've done. I've seen the work, I've seen the notes. Um, obviously, behind the camera, I can see everything that's been going on. There's been a lot of hard work from Sal uh, and, and some support from, from other members yes, as well. Yeah. Um, Stuart and, and Judith, Judith yeah. as well. The important to mention as well. Yeah. So Rex, do to make sure that uh, mm -hmm. that was well. Um, and um, there are some. Uh, obviously, you can send us um, plenty of feedback if there, uh, if you've got any on this session or other sessions that you want to um, uh, go through. Um, we've got sorry. the uh, sorry, <laughs> link that's uh, just uh, links coming up there, and there was a bit of touch on on publicity we we talked about, but um, certainly there's the link. Um, go on the British Orienteering website for lots of things there. Um, uh, and the next main live um, webinar that's coming up is on the 25th of April, uh, which we'll be looking at attracting and retaining juniors. Um, so seeing some of the information for that already, and that's, uh, that's exciting that's, that's coming up through there. Um, so a few other questions just while I was talking um, on there. Um, Walton Chasers are looking to do a new person's welcome briefing, so 15 minutes before the start of the event. So again, that, well, that could yeah, be something where yeah. That, that could be advertised yeah. at a specific time yeah. um, for people that are coming through. Um, uh, which month in the year is best for attracting new people? 
That's interesting. Thank you, Richard, oh. for that one. May, June, September. Well, January is a kind of obvious one, isn't there? There was this that Red January campaign this yes. year where they try a different sport mm. each day, and I kind of wished I'd known about <laughs> that to kind of yeah. tap into it. But next year, you know, we could. Oh, it's certainly oh, good. Um, and likewise, obviously, once the uh, the weather starts improving yeah. as well, that's certainly a good one. If you've yeah. got a series of events um, that are running in good weather. Mm. You, you're likely to attract certain people that are going to want to, to come out. Um, and do your newcomers transition okay to Sundays after coming on Saturdays? Some do, yes, yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, yes, organised coaching prior to events. Uh, and it's about publicising it as yeah. well, isn't it? Make sure you've got that, that structure um, in place. Brilliant. If anybody does have any more specific questions and um, <coughs> like to ask Sal, um, so, then do, um, we'll be. We'll be able to type them in um, as we go through, as we uh, as we log off here. Um, but thank you very much for, for joining us this evening, and um, we'll see you again soon.